Hello everybody, I am Sanjut Anurag of Team Infinity from India, here to give a small talk about a project with my friends Ashish Rohan, Nikhil Anil, Preetam Arul, Ashish Ritwik and Jishwin Sam. Project Infinity first started off as nothing but a group of friends with a dream. This dream was to win the NASA Ames Space Settlement Contest. At the beginning of this project, this task was nothing but a distant dream. However, as we approach the end of Project Infinity, this distant dream crept closer and closer. And now here we are, standing before you with this achievement. Now, you might be wondering, where did we get inspiration for Project Infinity? Was it from other projects, other space programs, other inventions? Well, none of you might have imagined that we drew inspiration from the smallest and simplest functional unit of life, the cell, more specifically, the plant cell. The energy production torus of our space settlement resembles the mitochondrion, also known as the powerhouse of the cell. The Golgi apparatus has similar functions to that of the docking port of our space settlement. The launch and the search pad are represented by the lysosomal enzymes of a cell. The biosphere and the laboratory has similar functions to that of a chloroplast of a plant cell. For the other structures of our space settlement, for instance the vertebrae, we took note of the human body itself. One could say that our entire space settlement is a living being with all its organs to support it. Now, for more information about this project, let's turn to the structural overview of Project Infinity. If you want to understand the function, then study the structure. A famous quote by Francis Crick. What shape is suitable to house a colony of 78,400 people? To answer this question, now let's take a look into the four fundamental configurations of a space settlement. First, we have a spear, then a dumbbell, a torus, and finally, a cylinder. Any possible habitat must be one of these four simple forms or a composite of them. What structure does infinity have? Project infinity structure has a unique and a combined structure of all the four fundamental configurations of a space settlement. So now, let me brief out to you the, some sectors of the space settlement. First, the launch pad, which is located at the uppermost region of the space settlement. What does it do? It collects the asteroid and submits it to the mining sector. The mining sector then mines the asteroid and extracts minerals from it. The extracted minerals are then sent to the energy production torus, where energy is produced by different methods. The industrial bubble is a place where Manufacturing industries are located and is where goods are produced and are sent to the habitation thory. The habitation thory, which consists of the Hestia and Vista, is a place where the inhabitants of the space settlement live. The biosphere is a place where farming and agriculture processes are done. The waste management thorus converts the waste into useful products. The docking port helps the spacecraft to be assembled and to be launched. Finally, we have the central sphere where the government is situated. So, when and where will the space settlement be constructed? The construction of the space settlement will begin at 2026. As in this year, space exploration expands. The space settlement will be constructed on the surface of Moon and of Mars. This is because rich resources will be available on the surface of Moon and from Mars. As we have enlightened you with the structure of our space settlement, now it's time to move on to the systems which would support life. Human survival is the most important objective in the project. Here I am to brief you about life support. Oxygen. Oxygen is extracted from asteroids and by electrolysis of water. When a region runs out of oxygen, people must assemble at the safety nucleus which will then provide them with oxygen. Water. Water is extracted from the asteroids, craters of Mars and Moon, and by neutralization. Water is supplied through a series of pipes and is stored in the water bank. Food. Food is the fuel of life. Cloned animals can also be a source of food. There are two types of food for food supply. The first one is the frozen stored food for non-veggies and elementary food for veggies, PA. PA is the chief resource in the working of the space settlement. 
Solar energy is the most important form of energy, which is by solar panels and solar seals. Power is supplied through power banks, which is present all over the space room. Junk disposal. Junk disposal is one of the major problems faced on Earth, but this will not occur in our space settlement because we have an advanced waste management system. In this system, the waste pad collects the waste from the habitational region and then sends it to the waste management, which will then process it according to its recyclability and non-recyclability. Housing. Housing contributes to the lodging of the fellow citizens. We provide the inhabitants with proper penthouses, villas, and normal homes. Outer space travel. Outer space travel is an entertainment in the external basis. It is managed by two paths in the Vesta and one path in the Hestia. We have discussed about life support and the structure of our space settlement. Now let's see how we provide security to our people. That is nothing but defense. There are two types of defense that we use in our space settlement. The internal defense that is against crimes and criminals. And the external defense is against the natural and the hazardous substances that affect our space settlement. The defense bases are situated inside our space settlement. It consists of three floors. The first floor is where arms and munitions are stored. It has two entries and exits for different types of arms and munitions. The second floor is where the board meeting takes place between the defense scientists and the chancellor. Third floor. Third floor is a place where the police force and the robotic canines reside. They enable us to catch and collect all criminals and evidences. Defense forts. Defense forts are situated outside our space settlement. It consists of two high advanced weapons. The laser beam shooters that shoot laser to destroy harmful asteroids that affect our space settlement. And when an unauthorized person enters a space settlement, he is sensed by the CCTV cam and is later shot by the rocket launcher. The defense fort is also a place where damaged automobiles are sent and repaired. Radar. Radar transmits and receives radio signals. These received radio signals are later converted into pictures by electric signals. There are two types of radar. The defense radar that detects harmful substances that affect our space settlement and the mining radar that detects any useful material that can be used by our space settlement. The nanobots. The nanobots are minuscule robots that cannot be seen through barren naked eyes. They are below 10 to the power minus 9 nanometers. There are three types of nanobots. The terrestrial nanobots, the aquatic nanobots, and aerial nanobots. We wanted to design our settlement in a highly energy efficient way. To make it more effective, we were asking what technologies would help us. After exploration and brainstorming, we identified that solutions to the blend of key technologies, such as 3D printing, robotics, nanoengineering, and IoT, would give us answers. We designed the Infinity Printer, which uses the 3D printing technology. It works at zero gravity, and this paves way to manufacture settlement parts using the raw materials extracted from asteroids, matters, and recycled wastage. We will use various methods like material extrusion, material jetting, and photopolymerization under the other two manufacturing process in the 3D printing division. Nanoengineering will be used by us across the settlement, especially in the medical and raw material mining needs. In medical, it would greatly support for surgeries, treat cancers, targeted drug deliveries, removal of stones in the kidney, and it keeps going on. It would help to constantly monitor patients and alert on health issues using the bio-monitor bots. Nanobots will be used to segregate water, minerals, and metals from the waste in the settlement. On the whole, they would ultimately help to keep all the 12 sectors of the settlement highly secure and stable. As years pass, the number of products consumed will parallelly increase, which paves way for a lot of waste. Well, can't we reuse them all? In infinity, we can thanks to the multi-material printing technology, which can help to create finished products within minimal assembly. This marvel will be present in various parts of the habitation tree. The super fast food printer can print any food within a really short span of time. We will also set up many replicators around the settlement. They'll be used to replicate the exact given object. Well, isn't that impressive? All the spacecrafts of infinity will be 3D printed with rigid materials. The technological revolution will take a huge leap as 90% of all our products will be self-made
by using the infinity printers. Here I am to present to you the final part of our presentation. The biobase is a complicated structure which provides a habitat for the nurturing and breeding of flora and fauna and also provides protection against the hostile environment of Mars. There are eight cuboidal facilities, namely the polar base with extremely low temperature, the desert base with the hottest temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, the tropical base with the highest humidity, the domestic base which provides habitat for the domestic animals, the savanna base with trees and shrubs, and two aqua bases for aquatic animals which have different atmospheric conditions and distinct climates for survival. All the cuboids will have quartz glass which allows sunlight to penetrate through and oxygen and carbon dioxide will be supplied accordingly. As we all know that global warming has been a serious threat to the living system on Earth, we have found a solution for the same in space. The first solution is the installment of gas detectors which detect greenhouse gases and alarm the officials in and inhabitants which in turn will be sent to the laboratory or waste management. The second solution is to produce artificial light through cylindrical tubes which emit less heat. The final solution is to avoid using gasoline vehicles which produce greenhouse gases and switch to battery powered and electric automobiles which produce none of them. Hence, we can control global warming within our settlement. Automatons play a vital role in all the essential parts of our settlement. The primary automaton used in the mining sector is the spider bot which performs various tasks using LIDAR and with the help of other secondary bots like Hall bot, Robo Extractor, HHR, Sniden. The Walker bot and Prime are used for various household purposes. Blinder helps to visually challenge people. The Care bot is a unique automaton which is designed and programmed for the aid of the physically challenged citizens. The manufacturing, transportation and assembly line automatons will be used in the industrial bubble. Thank you. For further queries, the team will be happy to answer all of your questions at the poster presentation.